Hello there, Learner Squadron, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have a very unexpected but exciting video as last night at the Game Awards, we were all shocked when Marvel's Blade was officially announced and revealed, and alongside it was a short 90 second or so trailer. Although it is a short trailer, there's actually a ton of details packed into this trailer and today we are going to be doing a complete breakdown of that trailer in that good old-fashioned Lunar Squadron style but before we get into this breakdown if you're new to the channel we would love to have you as always and the way to do that just go down below this video hit that little subscribe button the bell notification right on next to it it will notify you every single time that Andreas and I upload now with that out of the way Andreas are you ready to get into a brand new Marvel game oh yeah very excited for this one so let's do this guys Of all the exciting stuff I was expecting to receive out of the Game Awards this year, a brand new Marvel game is certainly not one of them, and it's certainly not every day that we get a brand new Marvel game, so Nick, I'm really excited about this. Yeah, I am as well, and I'm right there with you. If I was thinking we were going to get an announcement about a Marvel game, I was expecting DLC for Marvel Spider-Man 2, if anything, to get announced at the Game Awards. Not a completely new game about Blade. This was a complete shock, but it is incredibly exciting. And the first place that I want to start, actually, before we get into the trailer itself is the description that came alongside the video that was uploaded to YouTube because this description actually provides a lot of great details about this game. It reads, In Marvel's Blade, Eric Brooks is the legendary Daywalker. Half man, half vampire, torn between the warm society of the living and the rushing power of the undead. From Bethesda and Arcane Leon, the studio that brought you Dishonored and Deathloop, Marvel's Blade is a mature, single-player, third-person game set in the heart of Paris, Andreas. That last sentence is incredibly exciting to me because when this game was first revealed, I thought it was going to be a first person game like some of Arcane's other titles, but we are getting a single player third person game while using Blade and his katana and guns and all of the other weapons in his arsenal. That's incredibly exciting. Yeah, it is. And the other minor detail that we got out of Arcane was that you are going to be able to play as Blade in your way. I think that's what he said. So very curious what that means. Play Blade in your way. Makes me think that there might be some level of customization or some level of ability to change the way that Blade does things. So I'm just curious to see what really that means because it is kind of cryptic to me at this stage. But speaking of cryptic, Nick, there is so much coded throughout this trailer, literally in different languages. And so this was a really interesting breakdown for us to piece together. And we actually found some really interesting stuff. So I can't wait to crack on into this one. That said, let's get into our frame by frame breakdown, starting with this introductory frame that we get right here. And I wanna start off with the graffiti on the wall to the left, you see in red text, I'm not even going to attempt to say this because this is in Latin. I am not a Latin speaker and I don't want to completely butcher it, but um, this is actually the Latin motto for the city of Paris and it means this vessel rocks but is never submerged. The long form of this Latin phrase is in vain you strive to submerge the ship of Peter. This vessel rocks but is never submerged. It is kind of a political statement that the people of Paris might disagree, they may waver, but that the ship of France never sinks. In particular, this phrase has taken on a particular political significance in France following the 2015 Paris attacks. This motto had a surge in popularity because it was increasingly used as a symbol of Paris's resistance to terrorism in Paris. So just given the context of this game, we know that there are going to be vampire attacks around Paris. It's very interesting that this statement would be printed on a wall and you see it at various points in graffiti on both the building in the back left and on the toward the ground in the back right. And so this is a statement that is being written throughout the city. It seems to be a symbol from the people against the terrorism that is being incited by the vampires on the city of Paris. So just a very cool detail there. Yeah, that is a very cool detail. And like you said, 
This shot is full of a ton of details. And one of my personal favorites was if you look up there in kind of the middle central portion of this shot, you'll see green graffiti running down along the side of the wall and it says vamps. And of course we know this game is going to be about vampires. So I wonder if there's like a vampire gang that are calling themselves vamps that are running around at night, like graffiti spraying these walls, just kind of messing with people. I'm just really excited to learn more about the groups involved in this game and kind of who's on what side and, and how blade is going to function in all of this. It's just, it's going to be really fun to learn more about this game. It really is. And as we kind of, proceed along here we are met by a time lapse the dead giveaway here is how fast these shadows are moving it is a clear time lapse here as you see the light is dwindling very quickly and we are approaching nighttime here and as we get closer to this building we see that it is entitled salon afro and we see that it is a barbershop later on but before we enter this barbershop nick i want to point out some of the religious symbols that we are seeing on the facade of this barbershop most notably the clearest religious symbol here is the cross on the door and then you also pointed out a very interesting religious symbol on the top left of this building as well right Yes, that symbol on the top left is actually a Triketra, and it has been used in other Marvel properties in the past, most notably in 2011 in the original Thor movie. It is on Mjolnir, that of course is Thor's hammer, and it then vanishes once he's banished, and it is used to represent Asgard, Midgard, and Utgard, and it also does have some religious properties in actual society. It does have ties to Buddhism throughout human history so just a very interesting religious symbol and we actually see a lot of religious symbols throughout this trailer yeah we do we see one right next to that triketra as well you can see there is a phrase in arabic and we went in and in lunar squadron fashion we translated this phrase to english and figured out where it's from and this phrase in arabic translates to i seek refuge in the lord of creation and the word creation has also been translated to mean daybreak. So I seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak. We have seen various texts that analogize creation to daybreak. Think of let there be light. Like when there was creation of the universe, that is when light was shed for the first time. And this particular phrase comes from the Quran, particularly Al-Falak, which is a section known as the daybreak, which is the 113th chapter of of the Quran. And so the significance of daybreak here is pretty obvious given uh, a later detail that we found in this trailer. Keep in mind that daybreak is far away at this point. We are transitioning into darkness at this point. And so seeking refuge in daylight means that it's safe during the day, but we all know what comes at night. And that is particularly when things are going to get dangerous and particularly where Blade is going to be very useful in this game. Now, speaking of the sun setting, Nick, we also get a point of dialogue here about the sun setting, right? Yes, we sure do. There is a announcement over, I guess, like an emergency intercom and where she says, attention, the sun is currently setting and then it kind of starts to get more muffled once you get the English version. But it, she basically starts saying that all of the citizens are required to shelter in place and wait out until like daybreak is I'm assuming what she ends up saying. But it's pretty much just a warning, like an emergency alert system of like, hey, the sun is setting. Vampires are starting to come out. All of the citizens need to shelter in place until it is safe to come out again. Just a very eerie environment being established here by the dev team. As we pass through the door here, we see yet another religious artifact, this being a mezuzah, which belongs to the Jewish faith. And that's not the last Jewish symbol that we see in this barber shop. You can actually see on the shelf in the back right here, as we pass through the door, there is a menorah. Um, and speaking of which, happy Hanukkah to those of you who are celebrating. And Nick, that's not the only religious symbol that we see littered throughout this barber shop, is it? Yeah, we absolutely do, guys. There are a ton of religious artifacts from all 
various different types of religions in here. And, you know, I got to wonder if this is just the barber being extra safe and he's seeking refuge in every religion he possibly can to protect himself from vampires. At least that was my takeaway from it. And Andreas, we know from the past that Blade has done something like this to have complete protection or be able to vanquish any vampire from any background. So just a cool call out here and, you know, just a barber being very, very careful. That's exactly right. Uh, if you guys have had the chance to read Don McGregor's three comic Blade miniseries, within that miniseries, Blade uses a teakwood katana that he carves various religious symbols into that katana, explaining that he does so so that he can protect himself from vampires of all backgrounds. So I'm wondering if this is maybe a passive reference to that Teakwood Katana. We haven't seen it very much since then, and I'm really wondering if we are going to see that Teakwood Katana come back. I know a lot of people have been wondering why that Teakwood Katana has gone missing in years since that comic series. So I would love to see more references to all sorts of Blade lore, such as that Katana. And as we go on ahead here, Nick, one of the most important details that we have is this tablet here. And Nick, it looks like at the top we get some sort of a countdown timer. Any idea what that is? Yeah, it appears to be a countdown timer until the sun sets, which of course would be very important to know with the whole vampires coming out after the sun goes down. Again, just painting that very eerie in dangerous environment you can see on the banner there you can see a logo of the sun setting and they only have about 23 seconds until the sun sets so they really are out of time and need to shelter in place and that is exactly what appears to be happening outside because earlier in the trailer people were slamming their doors shut and closing windows and all of that kind of stuff but again just another very eerie environment being put forth by the dev team here. And I, I really like the shot of the Eiffel Tower at sunset with like the military helicopters going around. Just, it reminds me of kind of like an I Am Legend type environment. If you guys have seen that movie or read those books, that's just kind of the feeling I'm getting from this game. And that would be just a really cool environment to mess around with Blade in. Yeah, no, I think that is exactly the sort of vibe that I'm getting from this as well. And that said, Nick, there are various different headlines in French underneath that counter that also shows that this is not a Paris that is doing well. It's in disarray. There's all sorts of things going on. So what we're going to do is we're going to translate these headlines from French into English, and we're going to talk through them. And there are actually some really cool references in here, the first of which being that first headline that you can see right here on the top left. And it says, translated to English, where is the Peregrine Falcon? And if you didn't know, the Peregrine Falcon is actually a Marvel hero, right, Nick? Yeah, he sure is. He is a French Marvel hero that first appeared in the Contest of Champions comic book back in the 1980s. This is just a very cool reference by the team here over at Marvel and Arcane to just throw this in. And it makes me wonder if this hero will factor into this game at all, or if it was just like a nice Easter egg that the dev team threw in for anyone like us who went looking for these details to point out and just have a nice conversation about. But I'm just excited to see if he actually shows up in this game because that is a pretty random hero, but we are in Paris after all. He is a French Marvel hero, so it would make a lot of sense and it would be a cool reference to previous Marvel entities. That it would, and I love Arcane already grappling with the source material and pulling out even somewhat obscure heroes out of the Marvel Universe here pulling a French hero, and I'd love to see them kind of expand on the Peregrine Falcon character. And one of the reasons why I'm curious about this is this headline, of course, is asking where is Peregrine Falcon? So I'm wondering if something happens to Peregrine, if he was defending the people of Paris from these vampires and something went wrong, he goes missing. And I'd really like to see if they kind of tie up this loose end later on whenever we get our hands on this game. But to progress on to the next headline here, this headline on the bottom left it translates to takeover of a popular social network by SI. I'm not sure if I'm taking anything away from this. Maybe this is just a filler headline. You know what? Before I turn it over to the comments, Nick, any ideas on this one? Yeah, I actually do have a theory and it's kind of a stretch, but it says like takeover of a popular social network by SI. And I do wonder if SI is some sort of group and the group that immediately comes to mind 
is Sable International from the Spider-Man universe. We've seen them in the Marvel Spider-Man games, of course, and they are a security group. So I just wonder if maybe that's who SI is referring to and they could be involved in this game, but that's probably just a stretch. But when I saw SI, that was the first thing that came to mind was Sable International. Honestly, Nick, if that is the case and this does refer to Sable International and they do end up playing a role in this game, that is incredibly impressive that you were able to point that out from this early stage uh, but as we proceed along here to the next headline which is on the bottom right here it translates to tense gatherings in the intramuros districts and the important part of this phrase is intramuros and that has a specific meaning when we're talking about paris paris intramuros literally means inside Paris walls, which refers to the region inside the walls surrounding the city of Paris, which excludes the suburb cities around Paris. So this might actually give us some insight into the area that we are going to get to explore in this Paris. We're talking about the heart of Paris, which actually makes sense because again, Nick, like you read that description of the YouTube video, said that this would be a third person game set in the heart of Paris, not the outskirts of Paris. And this just goes to confirm just that. Yeah, it sure does. It probably just gives us a little insight as to what we can expect when it comes to the playable area of this game being centralized and pretty much entirely located just within the city confines of Paris. We're not getting this you know, GTA style, massive open world, most likely. So we will definitely be spending pretty much all our time, if not 100% of our time within the city limits of Paris, which offers a lot of possibilities and a lot of opportunity. It's still a massive city. So we still could be dealing with a pretty sizable map, but we just know what to kind of expect going forward. And of course, that can always change. They could expand it, but I don't see why they would. And again, the other part of importance here is that there are, be, there are tense gatherings within that district. And we're going to see that tensity in the next few headlines here as the headlines to the left scroll upwards. We see the new bottom left headline here translates to ER report explosives remain untraceable. So there were apparently some explosives here and there's even more unrest with a new shifting headline to the bottom right, which translates to clashes break out on the sidelines of the social movement. That might more literally translate to radical individuals in a social movement. I'm not sure of what the French translation of sidelines of a social movement means. If any of you guys are native French speakers, please let me know in the comments down below what the actual practical translation of this is but nonetheless what i'm taking away from this nick is that there are clashes breaking out between various members of some sort of social movement so we are again seeing a paris in civil unrest here yeah we sure are and this is a trope that you see in a lot of apocalyptic style films shows books all of that kind of stuff just stories that center around events like this where you will see civil unrest arise within factions and you'll get this social unrest and groups going against each other because people no longer respect the rules of society or whatever has been pre-established and they revolt against a particular faction or another group. So I'm not surprised to see that in this game there will also be factions breaking down and kind of conflicting within each other, which will just present some more very fascinating conflicts for you to encounter along your way playing through this game as Blade. Just a lot of interesting post-apocalyptic style things happening from this trailer. And on that post-apocalyptic theme, Nick, we see that counter is continuously going down here. And we see the barber sets down his clippers, picks up his razor blade here. Uh, I like the funny play on Blade. He's using a blade to give Blade a beard cut, which is interesting. Um, and this barber looks terrified here as he approaches uh blade he's fumbling around his razor blade he accidentally cuts himself and he grabs his cross before he approaches blade uh, again just showing that this might be an incredibly careful barber just looking at his barber shop um he he's exceedingly careful and you're feeling that tensity between him and blade here and nick this is a shot that i really love remember that window or symbol of a cross on the door 
it is casting light in the shape of a cross on the floor here. I just love the symbolism here when you take into consideration all of the religious symbols that are just spread throughout this barbershop. This is yet another religious symbol, and I love that effect of that light peering through the barbershop. Yeah, it's very cool, and what I really love about this sequence is just the dichotomy between the two characters here, where you have the barber who is incredibly careful. He has these religious artifacts strung up around the place. He's clearly very nervous. He keeps looking back at Blade. He's fumbling around with his objects, and this whole entire time he's doing that, Blade is completely relaxed. He's laid back in that chair. He's tapping his foot to the music. He actually tells the barber to turn the music up. Like, he's totally chill. He's completely relaxed. And it's just this dichotomy that exists between this cool, suave Blade and this very nervous barber is just makes for a very fascinating dynamic between these two and almost kind of a comedic dynamic between these two. And what I love about this, Nick, is the reason why he might be terrified, because of course, they've shown us just in a frame earlier, this countdown. So this barber is terrified, like he knows what's coming. It is going to be nighttime pretty soon, which means there will be vampires. And so this barber is terrified, but Blade is chill. He's got it together here. And this, when, this sequence right here, when the barber strikes the blade, you can see the light turns red. Presumably, it has struck sundown here, and that is when all hell breaks loose. You can see on the bottom left-hand side of the frame here, shadows quickly flying by. These are presumably shadows belonging to vampires, and Nick, if the vampires in this game are going to be running that quickly, this is truly going to have some sort of a horror element to it, and I can't wait to be face-to-face -face with this sort of environment playing as Blade. Yeah, I really am getting like a 27 Days Later or an I Am Legend type vibes from this game. Like there is going to be that post-apocalyptic horror type zombie feel to this game, which I think is going to be a lot of fun and incredibly terrifying. And I also love how Blade reassures the barber through the scene where he's like, dude, don't worry, I don't bite. Like I'm not going to do anything to you. There's no reason for you to be scared of me. Like I'm just chill, just need a shave. Like I'm not going to do anything to you. Everything's going to be all right. And then you get to see the continuation of this very suave individual where he puts on his sunglasses, he gets up, he gives the barber a 20, and he tells him, just make sure you lock up tightly. It's going to be a long night. The night's just getting started. It's incredibly cool. We get the shot here where he pulls his jacket back and you get to see his arsenal of weapons. He's got grenades. He's got his revolver. And then this trailer ends with an incredibly iconic shot and probably the coolest one. You get the mix of this really cool beat drop with the music and the sound effect of the sword. As Blade reaches back for that katana, he reveals that silver blade and we cut to black with the finish of the trailer with the logo for Marvel's Blade. Just a very cool sequence when you take into consideration the music and just the overall vibe of this trailer. If you guys haven't played this part and paid close attention to this, I would recommend you go do it. It's just a really cool sequence of this trailer. But there the trailer ends. Guys, we are getting a Marvel's Blade game apparently down the road. And Andreas, before we get out of here, I just want to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is this additional context that was provided by Bethesda after this trailer, because when this trailer dropped at the Game Awards, it did not come with a release date at all, not even a release year. No, it did not, and perhaps even more concerning here, Nick, is that it didn't even post which consoles this game would be releasing on, which generation it would be releasing on, and of course, we would almost expect Bethesda to be exclusively releasing this on Xbox, perhaps alongside a release on PC, but this trailer did not reveal which platforms this game was going to release on, which raised concern among a lot of people thinking, you know, is this going to come out on the next Xbox? Is, is that why that was omitted? And then to make matters worse here, like you said, Nick, there was a perhaps somewhat of a warning shot from Bethesda's Twitter saying, quote, development on Marvel's Blade has just begun, but we're thrilled to be able to make this announcement in honor of Blade's 50th anniversary. And a lot of people are taking away from this that this was a premature announcement just for the sake of announcing this game at the time marker of Blade's 50th anniversary, but that this game isn't coming anytime soon. But to rebut that, Nick, we have seen Arcane turnaround times 
And particularly with Deathloop, their turnaround time from announcement at E3 2019 to release in 2021 was approximately two years. So I wouldn't think it would be too big of a stretch to expect this game in 2026, maybe even if we're pushing it late, late 2025. But I wouldn't really expect any sooner than 2026 for this title. Yeah, definitely. And the one thing that does kind of scare me before we get out of here is just like the whole Indiana Jones game that was announced with a CGI trailer nearly three years ago out of Bethesda. And we've gotten literally nothing since then. No information. We're apparently going to be getting more information here sometime in 2024, but that will be after three years since it had been announced. And we're still no closer to a release date. At least that's how it feels. So guys, I really think we're going to be waiting just a little bit for Marvel's Blade. But in the meantime, there are plenty of great Marvel games covering, of course, Marvel's Wolverine. We have the Captain America Black Panther crossover somewhere down the road soon out of Skydance. We have the Iron Man game. Like, there's a ton of Marvel games that are in the pipeline that are coming. We really are going to be eating good as Marvel fans until probably the 2030s at the rate we're going. So really is a great time to be a fan of Marvel games. Guys, let us know down below in the comments your thoughts on this surprise announcement of a Blade game. Are you excited for this game? Is this one you're definitely going to be paying attention to? for the next few years. I know we definitely are. We are so excited to learn more about this game and just kind of the universe that Arcane Leon is building over there. We really think this has the potential to be something special. So definitely let us know your thoughts down below and let us know your thoughts overall of the Game Awards, which announcements made you the most excited? What were you most looking forward to hear about that maybe didn't show up? What did you think of the overall winners of the Game Awards, you know, Game of the Year, stuff like that? Just let us know your thoughts. It's a very interesting period of time for gaming as a whole. But guys, that is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, we will see you all next time.